would you be able to take in the Virginia range horses that are being rounded up right now and are not going to be able to go into long-term holding? Um, I'm not taking in anything else right now. I've had so many calls because I have to do what's right for the land that we're on right now. Um, we only have the four and a half thousand acres um, fenced in, and the horses that you can see are roaming out there free. And I don't want to compromise that. You know, we're going to feed um, supplemental feed for the winter, and we've already bought our hay. Now, I don't want to do the wrong thing and end up like a, you know a puppy mill where you you know start hoarding and taking and it, it doesn't work out. I mean, you know, we're trying to, to do the right thing here, so I, I won't be able to. Um. We should consider funding the privatization of the BLM. <laughs> Before you got here, um, it was suggested to us by, um, by Joan, the, the new uh, BLM Wild Horse and Borough Director, that we go out and see a roundup. She invited us to see a roundup. When I was watching your film of the roundups, I was quite disturbed to see these animals being knocked over by helicopters. In one case, I saw a burrow kicked and raised up. Um, I consider that abuse. I consider that animal abuse. Um, do you think that the public would like to see these roundups? You know, um, that's up to the BLM. Like, you know, I know we have a lot of advocates here that try to go and see the, the roundups, and they're very careful which roundups they're allowed to go and see. Um, I think we have video that, you know, uh, one picture tells a thousand words, so you can't deny what's going on. Uh, as we all know, in anything there can be an accident, and an accidents aren't planned. But consistent accidents are not acceptable. So um, we're all familiar with, with that in this room, and uh, you know, I think uh, it's just a sad. You know, we're in a sad, sad situation. And we're all trying to make it work and fix it. It's it's a program that's broken. You know, it was broken many, many years ago. And for many reasons, you know. So we can only start to fix it a bit at a time. And the thing we have to engage in is the confidence of the Bureau of Land Management. Because um, right now they're going, well, she's just a crazy that showed up. She's a touchy-feely that likes animals, of course. And she's doing this where she doesn't know what she's doing, you know. Um, and I, I've seen enough to know that what's going on is not right either. You know, I've got um, a lot of land, uh, the 18 and a half thousand deeded acres, and then we've got over half a million acres of public lands, and I've driven it. I drove up to Spruce Mountain this uh, last week with Clay, and then he was there yesterday. I talked to him. We were marking out where our deeded land is in all different areas, and there's so much forage and both the times that I went driving for hours, we didn't see any horses. So we're going to have a problem trying to take the public out to see uh, wild horses. They won't see them. And that's part of why um, it's going to be important for me to have this herds that the public can see. And the idea is also just to share the land with the public. There's no reason, even if you don't see the wild horses out there, experience your public lands. And a lot of people are handicapped, they can't, a lot of children, but we'll be able to provide education. You know, I mean, how many times did you ever go out with your father and go camping and count the stars, you know? Um, now we have light pollution. And I mean, there's just a myriad of things that people can learn there, and it's families learning together. Go on vacation and come back instead of just having, you know, gone shopping, gone to malls, gone sunbathing, you're coming back with a rich history. You know, I remember doing homework with my daughter, and uh, I was born overseas, so I didn't do American history, but we got to the page of Lewis and Clark and Sagajewea, and I was mesmerized, you know. And then I turned the page, and it went on to something else, and I said, how sad. America has got such a great tribal history. You know, we have a sexy heritage. I've always said that. I came to America because it was sexy. And it really is. I mean, think of what other countries have, the Till of the Hun or whatever, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't think you guys know what you have. You know? I remember that one of the reasons that BLM didn't want to give you wild horses to take care of is because they're going to have to pay you $500 a horse a year 
or something for you to take care of. Is that true? Yes. Um, I want the same amount of money as they are paying the ranchers in long-term holding. That's fair. That's fair. And uh, she would... <laughs> if, you, if the government has removed a horse, they have a moral and a fiscal responsibility to take care of that horse for the rest of its life. Now, if they want to do it in short-term holding at $2,500 a year per horse, They'd rather do that than give it to me at 475 or 400 or whatever the number is that they determine, which would be the same as uh, long-term holding. I think that's fair. I bought the land, after all. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you speak of taking horses, um, idealistic, that of short-term holding. And why, why not long-term holding? I'm just curious as to why that you wouldn't want to take the horses already in long-term holding and put them on your facilities. Well, the immediate need is for the ones that are in short-term holding because they're just corralled. But you know, they're in corrals. Some of the corrals now are bigger, but they need to come out of them. They need to go to long-term holding, and so I would be the, the, the natural place for them to go. Now, they have contracts with long-term holding, and you know, ideally you'd like to hope that we could create... Really what we should be doing is creating a horse management area where we in increase to two million acres. And um, we, we learn to control them in that area and with uh, supplemental feed, enough water. You know, all, it's, it's like when I bought my place at the Spruce. There's all, the, I think there's 21 um, wells and 19 springs and, and nothing works there. You know, I don't know if you know this, but there's a fire truck, a water fire truck that comes out and it fills the pot so the horses can drink. And I said to them, you know, now that I've bought the land, you can open them up, we can fix them up. No, no, it's much better, we're happy with the way it is. They drive all the way out from Elko with a fire truck, 75 miles to fill this one watering hole. I don't get it. It's on a well. You have wells? They don't work. Because the man who owned the property before me had cows, he was, you know, grazing cattle, so he, it wasn't in his best interest to keep everything going for horses. After all, the cows aren't going to climb to the top of the mountain or go over here. They hang around where the little water place is. Will BLM allow you to open the wells? Oh, sure, yeah. Uh -huh. Once we get the directive that, you know, we're going to go into this program, I mean, we're going to have to do some work anyway. I've been working on the warm creek right now, putting in pivots and they're growing the supplemental feed and water lines and electric and everything else. So, you know, I mean, it's just a thought out process. But, but when I look at it and I go, gosh, you know, no wonder the horses are all kept going to one area. It's the only place where the water is, so. What is the situation with you um, obtaining more land in order to obtain more horses? Well, what I did was I asked <laughs> our friend over here, I said, why don't we make a commitment to each other? You know, and uh, if you guarantee 15,000 horses, let's go out, you know, and put a program together. But, it, you know, I don't want to just be a cattle rancher. I'm as big a cattle rancher as I want to be right now. And um, to go any further and to grow, you need to work together because I, I, I don't want to get lost in space out there. You're talking about land where you are now. Yes. Well, you know, that's a local thing, and I tell people that all the time. You need to work with your chamber of commerce, get together with your local business groups, find all the corporations that are in your area, and uh, show them what you can do, because you, nobody can control the whole of the United States. You know, I've, I've picked my area because I think that's where 50% of the horses came from. What you have is quite beautiful where you are, 
and you know you've allowed not you but uh, America's allowed you know man you know we're awful mankind we sort of go in and take everything we want and we don't ever consider the consequences of our behavior and the footprint that we leave behind but I but I can honestly tell you if you keep it local when I say local within the state you're within your state you should get help there That, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, they're on the deeded land right now, but they, they should be. And if you notice, when I opened up with a video of you know, bringing the Paiutes in, it ended with uh, the wild horse herd, not the Paiutes, out on the public lands. And you could see the beauty of it. And um, you know, now we have interest in America where people want to get involved, to be a part of it. The BLM is not isolated anymore on their own where they have to do this. And they aren't subject to the stockmen. Um, you know what I find amazing is that I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a very simplistic little pie for you, but years ago, this is how I look at it, okay, and take it for what it is, but years ago, a little man came out from the East Coast, and he showed up in Nevada, and he looked and he said, wow, look at all that land there. And he said, ooh, I'd like to have some of that deed.